A few weeks ago, I was doing some moon-related browsing, and I stumbled upon this article that ranked all the moons in the solar system, so out of curiosity, I gave it a click. And while I mostly agree with their choices for the top 20, I have several opinions about the rest of the article, which I discuss at length in this episode of the channel podcast. Now, to the article's credit, it does say this ranking is subjective, and I'm not going to be that guy and nitpick the entire list. But what I will do is defend the moon that came in dead last, which is Dia, a small moon of Jupiter that's part of the Himalaya group. After looking through all of the moons that were ranked higher, there's no logical reason, to me at least, as to why this little Jovian moon is at the bottom of the list. Is it because we just don't know that much about Dia? If that's the case, then half the moons in this list should be in joint last place, as the only information we have on them is their estimated size, their orbital data, and their discovery logs. And, in defense of Dia, there's more to it than just this base information, because you see Dia came back from the dead. <laughs> Dia was initially observed back in 2000, but the observations were not confirmed and this little moon was considered lost. Six years later, as the New Horizons satellite flew past Jupiter, it snapped this photo of another Jovian moon, Himalaya, to test its onboard cameras. For a while, this faint streak beneath the moon was thought to be impact debris from a collision between Himalaya and the lost moon of Dia. It's a solid theory, as collisions between moons do happen, and if Dia was now truly lost by impacting Himalaya, it would be a wonderfully poetic end to this little moon. You see, Dia actually originated from a massive impact on Himalaya, all the moons within the Himalaya group did, where each moon in this group is a remnant of that collision. However, Dia wasn't obliterated, and four years later, in 2010, it was re-observed by the very team who originally discovered it. Now, does this tale of resurrection make Dia as intriguing as, say, a moon covered in methane lakes? Perhaps not, but I don't think it makes it the least interesting moon in the solar system either. So, why else is Dia in last place? Is it because it doesn't have a snappy name? I have a sneaking suspicion that might be the case, as there's a few comments dotted throughout the article referring to the names of the various moons. And then there's Kali, spelled Kale, just like the trendy leafy green, which clinched the 47th spot, a moon that we only have the base information for, the same base information that's available for the bottom 100 moons. So what makes Kali so special? I know this list is meant to be subjective, but just because a moon happens to share the spelling of a trendy leafy green that often goes uneaten, doesn't mean it should go in the top 50, especially when you have the likes of Methany and Metis that are ranked beneath it. Side note, I'm a total hypocrite here, as I'm currently working on a video about Kali, and will more than likely make a similar reference to said trendy leafy green. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, alright smarty pants, which moon would you put in last place? Well, I know this is a cop-out answer, but I honestly don't think any really warrant being bottom of the list. Obviously, some moons are more interesting than others. How can there not be when you have a volcano moon right next to an ice moon? But every moon has something to offer in our understanding of the solar system. By looking at the destructive origins of the moon groups, we can learn more about the early stages of the solar system and the late heavy bombardment. Studying the strange orbital paths of a planet's outermost moons will help us figure out the intense gravity of the Sun, like for example, the lead-off Crozi mechanism. And in the case of Dysnomia, the most distant moon in our solar system, its discovery made us redefine what constitutes as a planet, and resulted in the infamous demotion of Pluto. Every moon is another piece of the puzzle that helps us put together our understanding of the solar system. And yeah, some pieces may be more interesting than others, but we still need them all to get a complete picture. Also, Saturn's moon of Calypso is the number one moon. 